I want to give him a place of his own. We'll take you to an annual event in Louisville that's a pilgrimage site for thousands of theater goers. Adventure through the whimsical world of one downtown resident and meet a couple of folks who've got a lot of local spirit. All that and more is coming up on this edition of Downtown 360. Hi, I'm Nyika Mosley. Welcome to Downtown 360, a new show about some of the fun, quirky things happening in Louisville's downtown. We all know the first Saturday in May is the Kentucky Derby. However, Louisville has another big nationally recognized event this spring, the Humana Festival at Actors Theater. Let's take a peek into this year's event. This will be our little secret. The Humana Festival isn't really a secret at all. Humana Festival is the longest running and most significant new play festival in the United States. Over a period of about a month, a handful of new American plays make their debuts. She's being theatrical. For 32 years, playwrights, actors, and other theater professionals have flocked to Louisville to be a part of this event. Gordo! This year, Carly Mench's All Hail Hurricane Gordo was one of the selections. It's a story of two brothers and a sudden house guest. Whoa. Anyone that's ever had a same-sex sibling knows that that's a very specific, painful slash loving relationship that you have. And so figuring out how to make that story uh, onto the stage, how to make it entertaining, how to keep it funny, how to keep the audience engaged, those are all of my jobs. Plays are submitted, reviewed, and chosen over a period of months. I want several plays by brand new writers, for example, plays by established writers who people will know and be curious about their work. Actors are hand-picked. This is like pretty much the biggest thing I've ever done. And the actual production time is condensed. Everyone stays up for days at a time. The Red Bull is plentiful. Uh, and it's, you know, it's the best artists from all around the country coming together. So that's exciting, I think, for anyone that enjoys the art form. For those involved, it's an intense but worthwhile experience. Just to be around like all these artists and, and all, these, all these great plays and just going to see theater all the time and, and meeting all kinds of people, it's been pretty great. A lot of the people who are in the plays and like the writers and the directors are people I've only sort of like read about in the Times or something and, and sort of hope to work with one day and now essentially we're colleagues. What's the matter where we are? In my car, on a road somewhere. In South Dakota! It's a sort of theater season preview. A rare chance to experience new voices, new styles, and new productions. This is like the marketplace. This is where people come to see what is going to be in New York and on stages all around the country in the next few years. You want to hit this for a while? Theater professionals from across the country come to check out the new crop of talent. There's a spectrum of work here that fits into commercial theaters and mid-sized theaters and avant-garde theaters so that uh, there are many different kinds of people who come here looking for talent. Many of the Humana Festival plays have gone on to win national acclaim, and there's always a hope they'll be picked up by theater companies across the country, and maybe even go on to Broadway. Three of the six full-length plays in this year's festival already have second and third productions lined up, so it's a good indication that the festival is healthy and that our place in the American theater is strong and that we expect to continue to be able to deliver some of the finest new plays out into the world. Coming up, we'll introduce you to a downtown resident who's a real fan of the art scene, especially when it comes to quirky collectibles. Your shrine in your home has to be in the restroom. That's the room where Elvis was when he finally left the building for good. It's a mix of um, some would say kitschy, some would say eccentric, some would say weird, but it's uh, mostly fun. I live in the Harbison, which is next door to the park where Louisville was founded. It's a converted warehouse building. My recollection is they made harnesses. Oh my gosh, they were so little then. Married. My wife and kids live, for the most part, in St. Louis. So we spend a good deal of time in the summer here, and we spend a lot of weekends here. 
our rule is you can't have anything out that can't be played with or broken. So, uh, you know, we have three kids, and kids touch stuff, and that's okay, because there's nothing in here that they shouldn't touch or shouldn't be interested in or shouldn't uh, be allowed to play with. Having kids downtown is something that really hasn't happened yet for a lot of people, and our kids love it down here. Uh, it's a very different, very, very different experience from what suburbia gives you. I've probably been here 13 years, and it's changed a lot in 13 years, from being sort of deserted after 5 o'clock to really being a, a boom town, for the better. A lot of amenities have come in, a lot more people, a really nice mix of people from, uh, not just from Louisville, but from other places. There's an ethnic mix, there's a age mix, um, race. I like being exposed to it, like the kids to be exposed to it, different perspectives, different people. First thing that Jack and I do uh, on the weekend is check out what, what's going on at the Fraser because they have these interpreters there, which is great. So there's a guy who's going to interpret Buffalo Bill. And there's a guy who's going to interpret a, a soldier in Wellington's army. We just walk down and get the schedule and, and say, okay, sword fight at 3 o'clock. That's great. So we toddle off, have a few sword fights of our own on the way. A speed Museum has the Art Sparks program down there at UofL. It's a great program, also within shouting distance. The main library at 4th and York. It's a good library overall, but the children's library is excellent, and our kids will spend all day there if, if we don't drag them out. One of the great things about living downtown in a commuter society is I don't commute. <laughs> I walk to work. It's two blocks. I can go a whole week without getting in a car. That's a great thing for me. I went to school in Washington, and uh, I lived on Capitol Hill, and I was three blocks away from where I went to school, and three blocks away from the Capitol and the uh, Smithsonian. Cities grow out, and I like to be as close to the center as possible. The things that I live around are the things that the people come to the city for. The theater, restaurants, parks. When I'm here by myself during the week, there's plenty of uh, restaurants. Cunningham's is a great place. The world's greatest fish sandwich. Dean Alley's Diner, third in Kentucky. That might be a secret. The best cream pie in Louisville. It's amazing. Next to the Ollie's Trolley, one of the last Ollie's Trolleys in America, there's a running path that goes all the way down to Chickasaw Park, about seven miles, a little off the, off the beaten path. The back entrance to the old colonnade cafeteria, there's a, a mural in about outside of that that people don't know about. Little things like that that you'd pass by. What people miss is their green acres, land spreading out so far and wide. You don't get that here where you can lay claim to it, but you have access to it because I've got acres and acres of green acres on Waterfront Park. Very, very content here. I can't imagine living anywhere else. 